Get ready for a lot of cultural references because today's topic is mermaids. It's technically defined as an aquatic creature with the upper body of a female human and the lower body of a fish, so don't confuse it with the less popular reverse mermaid or the merman, which is a different Wikipedia article. If you're like me, most of what you know about mermaids is mostly referencing them in conversation. Specifically, the 1989 Disney classic The Little Mermaid, which kicked off the Disney Renaissance period. All of which are very close to every American millennial's heart. Fun fact, the Disney Renaissance period is considered to have ended in 1999. But do you know what the last movie of the era was? I'll give you a hint. It's not Mulan or Hercules. I'll tell you guys at the end of the video, just to do that whole bait and switch or bait and, bait and catch. I don't know what's... Where YouTubers say the thing at the beginning and then like, oh, wait, wait until the end. So what Mr. Beast does. You'll, you'll see Miss, Mr. Beast does that all the time. Wait until the end of the video to find out bleh. Now on to the things that most people probably don't know. Sometimes mermaids are associated with bad things, such as floods, shipwrecks, storms, drownings. Clearly these beliefs were held before people understood climate change. Contrarily, other folk traditions describe them as benevolent, either giving aids to humans or in some cases, straight up falling in love with them. The article directly states that sightings of mermen are much less common than sightings of mermaids. And I'm gonna say that's probably because it's much more fun for a bunch of seafaring men in the 1800s to have reported sighting a naked woman, instead of a bunch of king tritons playing water polo together, or whatever mermen do. The Western idea of mermaids being seen as beautiful, seductive singers is suspected to have been influenced by the sirens in Greek mythology. Those are the super cute women that lure you into the lake with songs and then eat up your face. Or so I thought, until I opened up the Siren article on Wikipedia and saw that the Greek version were more like half-bird things, like those little guys from Twilight Princess, or Skyrim. Christopher Columbus reported sighting mermaids, but he's, uh, growing less and less popular every day. But most people agree that other people were just seeing natural creatures, like manatees or other aquatic creatures. I wasn't really sure what other examples of similar aquatic creatures would be, so I asked ChatGPT. But the most interesting was the relationship to the elephant, which relates to the manatee because they're a part of the Proboscidea order. Yes, I had to look up how to pronounce that word. The earliest mention of the mermaid was in the Canterbury Tales by Chaucer in the 14th century. And the reason they were called mermaids is because of Middle English. The word mer meant sea, or mere. I don't, I don't know how it's pronounced by itself. So really we should be calling mermaids sea maids in order to update them to the modern language. Through the Middle Ages, the part fish version of sirens became more and more popular. A Middle English bestiary describes the mermaid as having a body and breast like that of a maiden, but joined at the navel by a body part which is definitely fish with fins growing out of her. I like how they say it's definitely a fish. Like some guys are standing around poking it like, yeah, it's definitely a fish. I even went as far as to look at Wikipedia sources. Who actually does that? Me. Sometimes. Actually, pretty much never, but you're accepting the risk of occasional inaccuracy by watching this channel. An old French bestiary stated that part of the body may be bird or fish. So at this point, they clearly don't care about consistency. They're just like, who knows? Could be bird, could be fish. And by the way, there are other theories explaining mermaids that are not just, oh, it's just a manatee. A philosopher named Anaximander, who lived in the region of modern-day Turkey, floated the idea that mermaids were some form of mankind that had diverged from some sort of aquatic creature. This theory is sometimes referred to as the aquatic ape theory. Or, ah, a British author named William Bond theorized that mermaids of folklore were actually just human women training to be deep divers for things like sea sponges or a necklace from the Titanic. Bond actually wrote several books on the subject, and I'm not going to take the time to read all those, so... Any of you are free to tell me what he thinks. Now we could take the time to go over what every country thinks and has said about mermaids, but that would probably become dull and repetitive very quickly. So long story short, mermaids appear in the folklore of Germany, Britain, Scandinavia, the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Empire, several Slavic countries, China, Korea, Japan, Indonesia, the Philippines, New Zealand, Africa, the Middle East, and America. Some other interesting appearances of mermaids are actually hoaxes. The Fiji mermaid was a version of a mermaid that was put on display by P.T. Barnum in the 1800s. Yes, the same P.T. Barnum from one of my earlier videos. I promise I don't have a fixation on this guy, he just finds a way into my life. It's said that an American sea captain purchased the Fiji mermaid from Japanese sailors, which Barnum then leased and put on display in his museum. It's suspected that there were many replicas of these made in Japan, but based on the wording in the article, no one's really sure. As you can see, the back half is a fish and the front half is some kind of weird monkey thing. And I mean, if you're in the 1800s and you're bringing insane creatures over the ocean, who's really gonna question you? Plenty of you might be like, oh, that's terrible. Who would do something like this? Don't lie. 
you would do something like this. If I put $10,000 on the table right now and said you wouldn't get caught, you'd grab this thing and run around to people like, Look at this cool mermonkey I found. Scientists have also entertained the possibility of mermaids through evolution and arrived at five primary reasons as to why it would not be possible. Number one, thermoregulation, AKA adaptions for regulating body heat. Number two, evolutionary mismatch in the sense that monkeys and humans might have a common ancestor, but not humans and fish. Number three, reproductive challenges. I don't think I have to explain how this one would be difficult unless you're the reverse mermaid from Family Guy. Number four, digestive differences. Humans and fish do not consume or digest food in the same way. And number five, lack physical evidence. Basically everything we've discussed so far in the video. Now there was an actual professor from the University of Washington that published an article in 1990 in the form of a real article. And of course, as we've learned in the age of social media, people easily mistook this as a genuine article having no grasp on how to discern truth from fiction. Now, some people already know about the differences between Disney's The Little Mermaid and the book it's based on by Hans Christian Andersen, such as the fact that having human legs caused her excruciating pain. But what a lot of people don't know is that in the book, after she arranges a wedding with the prince, she finds out the only way for her to survive is to stab him with a magic knife. Classic. She refuses to harm the prince, which causes her to dissolve into foam. Apparently, that's how mermaids die in the world of Hans Christian Andersen. So just remember that the next time you're swimming in the ocean next to some foam. But because of her selflessness and refusing to harm the prince, she gets resurrected as an air spirit, which I guess is cool and all, but to me, does it really make up for being tricked into dying? In my opinion, Hans Christian Andersen's Little Mermaid was inspired by the 1811 German novella Undine. Undine. Again, I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm going to stick with Undine, which is a story where a water spirit marries a knight in order to gain a soul. I guess not having a soul is the main downside to being a mermaid. And then The Little Mermaid itself went on to expire other works, such as Oscar Wilde's The Fisherman and His Soul, and H.G. Wells' The Sea Lady. But we didn't hear about those books, because Disney didn't base a movie off of them. Hashtag Sea Maid. Plenty of modern day films and TV shows make references to mermaids. From 1984's Splash to 2008's Ponyo, and of course, Australia's teen dramedy, H2O, Just Add Water. And in the rare case of a Wikipedia article with no citation, the end of this section says, the Starbucks coffee logo is a mellow scene. Not knowing what that was, I of course looked it up, and it turns out, it's another freshwater spirit. But with two tails instead of one. But this one also has wings and a hat, which is cooler. Did you remember that I was going to reveal which movie marked the end of the Disney Renaissance period? Pause again if you want to guess. Three, two, one, Tarzan. It was Tarzan. Thank you. Thank you, Phil Collins, for everything you did. See you guys next video!